Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and today, first thing is I'm gonna show you over some of the things that I'm not as happy with, with the Z. All right, so overall, I'm pretty happy with how the Z has come together. It's, um, it's, it's looking pretty good, but there's a few bits that, uh, particularly once I got it all one color, I, it uh, brought them to the surface and I could actually see what, um, what I was happy with, what I wasn't happy with, and I'll take you over and show you them now. So for starters, I'll take you down here, this is the rear wheel arch, and you can sort of see here that this is all bent and schmuckled, and I didn't really actually bother about uh, sorting that out, so I'm, I'm gonna tidy that up. I, I want that to still, you know, all the little bits, the little tiny touches that need to look neat. And that's the same on this side here. You can see that it's, you know, just not, not neat, and I want it neat. It might be hard to see, but there's a couple of lumps on the back end here that I'm not entirely happy with. It needs a little bit of fettling. Same with this corner here. Just is a, is a little bit rough, and you can see it now that the, uh, it's in the light. Don't know how well the camera's picking that up, but it's, it's, just not, it's just not good enough. And particularly when I paint it, you're gonna see it. If you can see it a little bit now, when it's matte, when it's uh, glossy, it's going to be awful. Another little thing that, that, that sort of annoys me is, is this cowl panel here. It's quite annoying because the, um, to get this end to sit where it's supposed to, it actually bends in here, I think because this panel's just been stretched so much. And uh, on the opposite side, over here, it's actually split. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm probably gonna go over to this far side, I'm gonna cut it and re-weld it, and just as I'm gonna re-weld this bit here into that position so it sits nice in the right spot and uh, looks the way it's supposed to look. Okay, that panel up the back there, the uh, cowling panel is looking much nicer. I'm uh, much happier with that. I just uh, needs a little bit of filler just to, to, to tidy in the light, slight divots, but um, that will be much neater when it's all back together. My next thing, I think I'm gonna leave all those, uh, the rest of that bodywork that I wasn't happy with now until I um, get onto blocking back the whole car, which is still a little bit away. Um, and I'm sure there's gonna be other things that I'm gonna need to find and, uh, and touch up, so I'll do that then. What I think I'm gonna tackle now is um, the mirrors on this car. So I filled in the mirror spots on the doors that were there, they were already actually pulled through and rusted through, so I repaired them ages ago. Um, Cause I like the, uh, the, the Japanese style uh, front guard mirrors that they have, but uh, the issue I found is that the reproduction, even the reproductions of those um, big stalk mirrors are really expensive. About $700 a pair, uh, which is, I just, I can't justify spending that sort of money on mirrors. Um, I did find online these really nasty ones that um, are similar, they've been sold as similar. So these, these things here. Now, they've got these ugly holes through them, and when I got them, I realized they're actually plastic, they're not metal, but um, these were about $100, a much, a much more realistic uh, price, and the shape is good, except for these stupid holes. So what my plan is, is, because um, I'm going to be painting um, the, uh, the guards and other bits and pieces anyway, I'm gonna paint these in the same color as the, uh, the wheel arch flares, and the rest in, in, in the nice metallic black. So this will all be sanded and they'll look nice and tidy when they're done. But what I have to try and come up with is, A, I need to mount them, and B, I've got to try and come up with some sort of method to, um, to fill these holes in and smooth it up and make it look pretty. So uh, in any case, first job, let's see how we go mounting them in the right spot on these guards. All right, so I've just done a fair bit of research trying to find out exactly where to put these mirrors. And there seems like there's been uh, some controversy in the past. I've read through a bunch of forum threads and there's, um, 
uh, a few different um, designs out there. There's uh, there's one image that seemed to have been used quite regularly that actually put the um, the mirrors inset further and further forward than a lot of the factory cars appear to be. And uh, some of the guys actually measured some factory cars, and this is from uh, old threads from years ago, but um, it actually appears that basically the the spot for the, the main hole for the JDM mirrors in, in, in any case um, is 275 millimeters back from this edge here where the uh, headlight bucket goes and 190 millimeters in from this edge here. And it's the same on both sides because some of the measurements show that um, the, uh, the mirror on the other side is further forward. It looks like there's actually lots of different placements, but uh, I'm happy with the, um, the one that some of the people who had uh, factory Japanese cars have measured and it's the same. And I like the idea of having them symmetrical. So that's the way I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, so um, now it's time to measure up, drill and, um, and mount these up. Should be pretty straightforward. All right, they're on. Um, I think they uh, they work for what they are at the moment. I'm still not a huge fan of these mirrors and uh, I may change them out at a later date, but at least the holes are in the right spot. The measurement was for the holes. So um, I can always do that. But um, yeah, I just can't justify $700. $700 just for some, some reproduction mirrors. In any case, um, I think I'm gonna leave the body for now and um, I think it's time to start cleaning up some bits and pieces for the uh, engine rebuild. Before I jump into cleaning the engine bits, I just thought um, I'd come through and I'd have a look at the inside of this booth. Now, one of the things is with this lighting, um, it's very similar to how it probably looks on camera, is um, it's very blue in here. Now, I got cool white LEDs because I thought that's closer to natural light. The trouble is, is I think these are a little bit bluer than natural light. So what I've gone and done is I've got a couple of rolls of warm white and this warm white I'm gonna lay in the strips on either side in between these. So A, it will add more light and B, hopefully the yellow will help balance out the blue a little bit more and get it a little bit more of a realistic color. So I'll just uh, cut these down now, add the, um, the warm white strips and uh, stick them back up and see if we've got a better color in the booth. Fingers crossed. It's probably hard to tell on camera, but that's actually, um, it does look a, uh, a bit better. I, you know, I'd still probably like a, uh, a little bit more, maybe if I added them to the ends as well, but that's, uh, that's as far as I'm gonna go with this. Um, it definitely helps. If you're looking it up close, you can definitely see the, um, the yellow compared to the, uh, the crisp white, and I think that's just a good enough balance. So um, in any case, that's done, so uh, now it's time to start getting out some of the uh, engine bits for the DATS and so I can get ready to start actually building that engine. But uh, before I can build it, I need to clean the old parts that I'm gonna be reusing. So um, let's start cleaning. Okay, so I'm wedged down here in the back of the workshop behind the spray booth and I've got my, um, my old trusty parts cleaner here um, and I've gotta go through and clean up the pistons uh, for using back in the engine again. Now, um, I put them all in individual numbered bags when I took them out. So this is piston number one, obviously from cylinder number one. And um, I'll just get it out. It's pretty greasy and there's a lot of carbon build up on the top and stuff like that. Um, it's actually, actually the sides are not too bad. It's not in that bad a condition. But um, what I'm looking at is um, I, I looked into uh, taking the gudgeon pins out and separating from the rods. And because I'm reusing it, um, I talked to my engine machinist and he was of the opinion it's the, they're not really a wear item, they don't, they don't wear a lot. And uh, the fact that I'm reusing it, it's not worth pushing them out. I'm quite likely to damage a piston, damage the rod. 
so I'm going to leave them together and just give them a good clean up and um, get them ready to put back in. So I'll go through and clean each individual uh, piston up and um, and then what I might do is I'm going to use the wire wheel, the brass wire wheel, nice soft wire wheel, just to get the, uh, the rest of the carbon off the top. Uh, being careful not to touch the sides, uh, the wire wheel can actually damage the ring lands and you want to keep a nice crisp sharp ring land so that's not the way to clean that up but um, the rest of it we'll, um, we'll see if we can pop these rings out and, uh, and just clean them up. Okay, so I've gone through and I've just uh, given these a good scrub uh, in the parts washer, in the solvent, and then I've gone, uh, I, I rinsed them off, blew them off, so they're nice and dry. Just one of the little tips um, to clean out the ring lands is to actually get uh, one of the old rings, this one I bent, you can bend or break, depending, these ones wouldn't break, they just bent. But um, they're perfect size, obviously, to run back through the edge of the, uh, the ring land and scrape out any of the carbon inside. So. Um, I've got them all spaced out. They're all marked. Um, they were previously marked with uh, you know, one to six on both the, um, the rod and um, the, the lower section of the rod. Um, so I've got them all laid out here, one to six. So I'm gonna go through and clean up the tops of all the pistons now, get rid of all of this carbon off the top, and then they should be pretty much ready to reuse. Okay, I've got my pistons, they're all cleaned up. I have got myself uh, a set of uh, new ARP rod bolts, uh, just to, uh, for peace of mind, I'm putting this back together. The rest, I'm gonna use the, uh, the factory bolts. I've been going through now, and I've been trying to weigh these um, pistons to try and get them all even, to basically, to blueprint the engine, if you like. Um, which is basically just making sure that everything is the same tolerance and the same, uh, the same weights and, and everything. And um, there's about three grams of difference between the, the largest and the smallest. So that's, that's a fair bit. Um, but the issue I have is that I'm using uh, Mrs. Jeff's kitchen scales, which she doesn't know about, <laughs> but I've, I've wrapped it in, in glad wrap, so it should be okay. Um, the, the trouble is, is that it's just not that accurate. It only goes down to one gram and on, uh, it keeps giving me differing results. It's still close, but I think uh, before I start getting in there with a die grinder and, uh, and trying to balance these all out, um, I'm going to um, get some better scales and see if I can get something a little bit more even. At any rate, that's a good start. Um, yes, the, uh, the, the pistons and rods are all good and ready to go. So uh, now it's time to move on to cleaning up all the rest of the bits and pieces. I've still got a bunch of stuff to still clean. So uh, let's start getting to cleaning that. Okay, I've got a fair bit of stuff cleaned up. It's, um, it's slow, tedious stuff, but it needs to be done. Going through and getting everything ready so we can actually start putting the engine together soon. That's um, sort of my next plan moving forward. Uh, before putting paint on the car, I wanna leave the uh, primer to sit as long as I can to sort of, uh, so it can sink back if, it, if it's going to. Um, so um, yeah, my, so my next plan is to uh, build the engine also so I can get the beetle in and have the dats and out and you know, cause swapping around and stuff. So in any case, um, that's all I've had time for today, but uh, that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, the Armstrong 500, which would eventually become the super cheap Bathurst 1000, moved from being held on Phillip Island to Mount Panorama in 1963. The popularity of the race grew rapidly. 
primarily because it was a way for the manufacturers of the car to showcase their products as the cars were identical to the ones found on their showroom floors. Agile small cars dominated the first years of the Bathurst 1000, with Mini Coopers and Cortina GTs being the favourites. Bob Jane took out the race in 1963 in a Cortina GT, followed by an E8 Holden. He won it again in 1964, with Cortinas taking out the top three places. All right, guys, that's it for another week. Um, I've got the, uh, the mirrors on the car. Uh, that might be a controversial thing, but it's the way I like the, uh, the JDM-style mirrors. I just don't want to pay for JDM-style mirrors. So uh, got them and starting to clean the engine bits up, which is a, a really good step to uh, building that engine, putting it together. I'm really looking forward to using some of the knowledge I gained at Performance Developments, building my 911 engine to try and sort of dumb it down to... Uh, to, to what I'm doing on the uh, on the Datsun. It's definitely not to the same level as what I can build over there because uh, I had a Neil and I had access to all those fantastic <laughs> machines and, and uh, measuring devices, but I'm trying to do this as well as I can. Uh, we are still open to suggestions for the car names and we've had some cracking ones so far, so keep them coming, they're really great. Yeah, so any of you who didn't watch the, uh, the Beetle video, basically um, I'm thinking that with the projects we've got so many projects going now. Instead of just calling them the uh, the 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 Datsun, the Porsche, the Beetle, whatever, we give them fun names like Roadkill has the um, the Rots and and uh, the Ugly Truckling and, and <laughs> lots of these sort of fun names. So give us your suggestions. In any case, um, as usual, help the channel out. Head down to the description and uh, buy some shirts and hoodies. And a really good way to help the channel out is actually. Um, I have some Amazon affiliate links down there for my cameras and stuff like that. But if you want to buy anything off of Amazon, just click on one of those links and then go and search for whatever you want and get it. And we actually get a kickback here from whatever, it's a few cents, but it all helps. So um, in any case, um, we'll see you next time. <laughs> see you guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. The... Hey guys. Move from being held at Mount Phillip Island <laughs> Driving a Cortina G3. GT. <laughs> it doesn't say that. No, it's not right at all.